thanks everyone for coming. This week, we're happy to have Jingwei Xiao uh, from Princeton and the Institute speaking on okay, this long title, A Unitary Analogy of Friedberg Jacquet Periods and Central Values of Standard L Functions on GL2N. OK, uh, well, stands for the invitation and pleasure to eventually be able to speak here. Um, so, what I want to talk about, first of all, this is joint work with Wei Zhang, and the work is still ongoing, and hopefully we can have some written ver version of this in one or two months. Um, so I guess roughly two years ago, Wei Zhang was giving a talk in the Institute um, in, on this thing, and this today's talk is going to be a continuation of that. We're going to explain the progress we made after the talk two years ago. Um, so it's going to be a conjecture. So there are two parts. Uh, the first part on the value of L functions of the standard L function central value uh, of GL2N. And, and the other part about the derivative. And for the value, it's going to be related to certain periods and for the derivative related to heights of some cycles on schema values. And so that was basically what we done explained two years ago. And the progress we have able to make, uh, which leads to this talk, is that we're able to have a concrete formulation of the relative phase formulas. And we have an approach that should give the results and we're able to prove most of the local ingredients in that comparison of trace formula. So now let me explain this. Mm, okay, let me start with motivations. By the way, is my voice clear? Yeah, thank you. Um, so motivations, I guess the most important ones are the special cycles on Shimura values. And so they're always interesting objects to look at Probably the first example is the so-called gross Lagel formula, where you consider, for simplicity, uh, let's say some imaginary quadratic extension of a Q, and it gives you certain thing called Hagen points, lives on your modular curve, x0 to n. And if you give some cuspid automorphic implementations, and um, which corresponding to modular forms of weight two, then you might take the corresponding pi component of your points and this, the famous formula of course, like Gale tells you this denoted height is related to the central derivative of certain L function. So the L function involved is you have a pi which is classified automorphic on GL to Q and you base change to GL to K and then you take the standard L function. And the normalization is our half is always the center. Uh, and of course, there are many generalizations of this, um, including work of Yuan Zhang of this to the Cotonian algebras. But I also want to mention this high dimensional conjectures that generalize the gross Lagel formula, this so called arithmetic Gangler's Prasad. And where you consider groups UN, unitary group, which is H, and it embeds diagonally into the group G, which is UN times UN plus one. And you assume these things can give you certain Shimura values. In this case, what, what happens is you assume of R, those unitary groups has a certain signature, is it UN, U1, M minus one into U1, M minus one times U1, N. And take the corresponding Shimura values. And in this case, the is H give you Shimura value of dimension M minus one, and G give you dimension two M minus one. Uh, oh. Sorry, this should be, um, there's no two here. There's two dimension of schema of H plus one equals to dimension of schema of G. Uh, the middle dimension of arithmetic sense, and then you might try to compute the corresponding cycles when you project to certain cuspid automorphic implementation that shows up in the core module. And one expect uh, there are intersection numbers, um, there should be something like Balance block height pairing should give you the central derivative 
of certain L functions. In this case, the L function involved is you're starting with pi, which is um, un times un plus one, and you base change through this quadratic extension, you get something on um, GON times GON plus one, and you take the ranking set of L functions. All right, any question? What is your tilde, your uh, non-vanishing at the same time, or do you mean that? Uh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm just being vague for this motivation part, yes. And if you want to be precise, one of the ways to formulate it is if one side is non zero, though, the other side is going to be non zero. Though. But so, you have much more accurate information, right? Yeah, but you have much, and you, you could expect some more accuracy, some identities, which involve some other you know, local quantities in the formula. Yeah, but for the moment, let me just be vague saying these two are more or less related. Um, today, uh, what I want to look, look about is another cycle that sits into this right dimension. And this is a case where instead of taking you taking G to be unitary groups of, of two unitary groups, you take a G to be one unitary group, G is U2N, and it has a subgroup given by UN times UN in base diagonally. And once again, you assume in the infinite place, uh, in the infinite, I think one of the infinite place they are given by U1 and minus one times U0 to N in base into U1 to N minus one. And so once again, it sits into the middle dimension in the sense of arithmetic and it makes sense to think about their intersection numbers or the height pair range that stay. And one would hope these numbers is related to, so we start with pi, which is a uh, automorphic limitation on G, which is U2N, you take base change to GL2N and take the standard L functions, evaluate in the center. All right, that's a very vague sense. And I'm going to be more precise, you know, in the second part. So forgive me to be vague here. And in fact, you could do something more. This is what I'm going to do. So instead of considering just U2N and UN times UN, you could announce some twist of this. And for the group G, you can announce some inner forms of unitary groups. They also give you Shimmer values. And for the group H, I'm going to do something called biquadratic. We're going to use another extension called E0, zero, and H will be something like the base change of UN to E0. Zero. It's like a twist form of UN times UN. And we're going to discuss things, what happens for this G and H after this twist. And one remark before I you know, go to more precise formulation. So this, this very quantity L function is also being studied in the CUDA-LAS program using the arithmetic select, select correspondence. It's exactly the same L function and same value. And the difference for the conjectures we have over here with, with their formula is that, first of all, we are now this G to be some inner forms of unitary groups. So we have somehow more Shimura values and in the, in the Kudas case is only in the unitary groups. We have some inner forms. Uh, and for a second, this bi-quadratic, this allowance for some bi-quadratic things will produce more cycles. Okay, um, I'll be more precise, you know, after I get to the actual setup, but it's a remark. Any question? Okay, this is about derivative and maybe it's more traditional thing is talking about automorphic periods. And this is also part of the conjectures which release L values to periods. So let me first of all, recall what it means so you have some number fields and some reductive groups and H is a subgroup G. And after you model by the center, what you do is you look at some cascade automorphic representations of G 
and you integral with along the adelic quotient of H after the quotient out by the more it's trivial component from the center. These things are called automorphic periods and they're often related to the values of L functions and sometimes functorial images from other, other groups. And in our previous case, it's give us, for the first example, the was for J formula. It's basically the same groups. And instead of considering Shimura values in the, before we consider just the periods and the square of the periods is going to be related to the L functions and not just the value of the L function. And in the case of Gangor's Prasad, the periods is related to the ranking cell by L functions evaluating the center. I guess in this case, the Gangor's Prasad is, is more or less low end. And let me go to our example, which I'm going to talk about this U21 and U1 plus U1. Then what one would expect is the peerage of this one, I think squares is related to the central values of the base change L function. The same L function, but take, just taking the values. All right. And so that's for the motivation. Any questions so far? All right, if no question, let me to actually explain the more precise setup. Um, So now this is the precise version. We're starting with some quadratic extension of number fields, F over F zero though. And we consider this is going to be inner forms of unitary groups, but we start with this B, which is the central simple algebra over F. And with the evolution of second kind, which means the evolution is a map from B to B, such that when you restrict to this extension F, it's the non-trivial Galois evolution. And this implies for depending on the local situation, if you have a place of F0, if this place is, is in Norton F, the existence of this, this involution of a second kind means your quaternion algebra less theory split. It's going to be a matrix algebra. And what you do is, is basically the conjugate, uh, the Galois conjugate and take transpose. And in a place, but you have the freedom in the places where this place V is split in the correct extension, then you end up with two places above V. And basically you can take any cotton, any single simple algebra you want, as long as the part about W and the part about W prime, they are inverse to each other. So your, uh, your convolution, involution will switch this to. That's the only condition you need to get a bunch of those uh, is B. And we define our group G to be U your B times B star equals one. So in the case where this is center of algebra is a matrix algebra, you get the unitary group. And this in general is a inner form of unitary group. And now, the group H, a subgroup, uh, we're going to do this by quadratic extensions by considering another one called E0, though. It's another quadratic extension. And we're assuming this quadratic extension embeds into our central simple algebra B, such that the involution fixes it, E0. And this restriction will imply the dimension of B is 4 and square. And we define the elements 
H is basically elements of G, but commute with E0. So B E0 is a centralizer of E0 in B. Uh, so to think about what is, what is actually happening, so actually for almost all the places where you avoid all the ramifications, avoid any places where the quaternion algebra or the central algebra does not split, then basically what you get is this pair G and H for almost all the places are isomorphic to one of those types I write down. There are four cases corresponding to this Backward extension U0 and F being split or not. So if both of them are split, then you get a G2N and G1N times G1N, or otherwise, there's some twist or some unitary groups and some twist. So these are the pairs of groups, and these are the local pictures for almost all the places. And we're going to consider these groups. Um, one thing that shows up very naturally in this picture is we have the extension F and E0, so you end up with another one called F prime. This is the, we have two extensions, so we have the composition, which is E, and you take the fixed point of the other automorphism of E. You get F prime, it could be, you know, uh, just F0 plus F0. And in, in our theory, we can allow some degenerate cases, but we have something F prime. And this, this guy will, will actually enter our formulation. And you will see in our conjecture. And let me also remark, so if we want to, so this is everything you need if you consider periods, but if you want to furthermore consider the derivative then you would like to assume something that you make sure you have Shimura values. And in this case, you just assume this F0 and E0 being totally real and the F is same extension and the group G has signatures uh, one and two minus one infinity. It will bring you back to the situation explaining the motivation where you have the Shimura values fits into the middle dimension. All right. Any question? Okay. Um, so we have this group G and H. Um, what I want to do now is to motivate our conjecture about their relation, the, the meaning of their periods. And and if you want to understand this, most of the time, if you have like groups G and H, and you want to understand the periods, it's always helpful to look at their base change. And in our case, after you do base change, you have to, so in our group G and H, when you do base change, you have to base change all the way to the, to the field E to get something which is split. And after the base change, you will get GO2N and the subgroup is GON times GON and the corresponding periods of these two. And this is starting extensively by Friedberg and Jacquet. And they have the following theory about the periods. So basically what happened is if you have some cascade automorphic permutations and because the condition on the center, it has to have trivial central character. And then the following are equivalent, if you, the period is being non-trivial, if and only if there are two things, the first one is the exterior product L function as a power one. And I'm going to say this pi is of some like type. And also this non addition is going to imply the central values of the standard L function is non-trivial. All right, that's your theory. This means in our case, if we want to make sure that this G and H, when you restrict to a certain representing pi as some non-trivial periods, then it would have some relation to ensure this pi is somehow of a symplectic type. 
and also have some relation with the central values of their function. And now let me, before I run and give the precise conjecture. Um, so in, in our situation, uh, we start with, so this field is going to be, this is diagram is going to be quite important. Um, you have like three quadratic extensions inside E. And you start with something on the group G, our unitary group, I write it pi G, and you base change to F, G O to an F, give you capital pi. And because of the free bridge K, it suggests this capital pi is of simplex type, in particular it's self-dual. And also because the base change from neutral groups also contributes self-dual. So this implies the pi is actually coming from something in the bottom because it's self-dual and conjugate self-dual. So it's invariant by the conjugate, a Galois conjugate. Therefore it's based, it should come from something in the base, which is our small pi here. This is uh, automatic forms on G02 and F0, F0 is the base. So we are going to formulate our conjecture for this small pi instead of the large pi. And the conjecture somehow will involve the base change of the small pi into this part, the F prime part. Okay. Now let me be precise. So the conjecture is the following. So if we start with a cuspid automorphic representation on the base and assuming it's of symbolic type and we base change that to this large pi over F um, and assuming the base change is also cuspid, then the following are equivalent. The first one is the central value of the L function, but interestingly, the, this L function is the base change to the other quadratic extension F prime. The L value of the base change of pi to F prime. And there's another, another one I'm gonna explain in a moment why this both happens. It's the first condition. And the second condition being equivalent is the existence of the pairs G and H and some pi G on this G such that the base change gave you the same capital pi. Such as, of course, the period is non-trivial on pi G. And in its formulation, this eta f is the quadratic character defined in the class field theory corresponding to the extension defined by f. So there are certain degenerate cases where this conjecture looks much simpler. Uh, in the case, for example, if f is good, f is split, this conjecture means is for the first part, the f prime and the e0 are the same. And this eta f is trivial. So you end up with only one L function. And th this conjecture is by Gorja K in, in the paper where they prove the fundamental lemma of, of Gorja K, they make this conjecture about the non-balishing of this L function with existence of this non-trivial periods. And in another case where this field E0 is split, then what happens is F prime is equal to F, and then this F prime and, and F are the same things, and this 2L function once again is going to be the same thing because the, it's, it's base change to F of, it's basically the fiber of the base change, so they end up with the same base change, okay, you get the same thing, which is just the capital pi, and the conjecture is the central value of capital pi in the case where the split it gave you the non-trivial appearance. And, but the conjecture actually is, you know, in, in other cases is you don't need them, this field to be split and you really want to do is you change to the F prime. 
and the L function is based on the F prime. And the reason why in the first part you have two L function is because this, in the second part, uh, this, these two L functions, this fragmentation pi and pi tensor with eta f, they are the fibers of the base change from small pi to the capital pi. So they end up with the same chain. So the second condition doesn't depend on this one or the twist. Therefore, we have to insert both of them in the first condition. Right, is there any question? But do you know which one? Uh, do you have precise side? Which one? Um, is it too precise, um, for this conjecture, no. I think we have a precise version if and it's odd. We are going to change GNH by the similitude Future groups, then we can make precise things. And for any even, I don't know. Mm -hmm. What will happen is in our trace formula, after do everything, then this both of them should show up in the in the one side. So you can't separate them um, in, our, in our approach. But we, we don't know. I mean, we can do that if we include the center in, in the case is odd, but I'm not sure whether we can do that or anything even. So so in a in a classical situation, is a uh, I mean, in there, when n equals one, right? Yeah, one equals one. It, it, I forget, is the classic, is the product of them? Um, uh, let me see, uh, different, or oh, you have both, you have both of them. That are different. Um, and because this twist is over F, but the base is over F prime. I see, I see. You have got all the E there, okay. So, yeah, so their, their product is, if you take the product of two, you get a base change all the way to the E. Ah. Yeah. Um, but but our, our our conjecture is one of them is not zero. It is weaker than the base change to E is not zero. Yeah. Any other question? Okay, um, so far it's, I mean, more than just wishful thinking, but what I want to explain is we have basically a strategy of trying to prove this and the strategy, um, we have most part of that strategy, even though it's still need to uh, work out some details. Of course, you need to make some further assumptions uh, if you want to use the symbol transformers. Uh, let me explain this approach. Mm, so what, what if you want to do is, uh, so maybe let me back to this and I say a little bit more. So, so you want to compare those L values and the periods and the approach using trace formula is you don't compare them one by one, you bring them into a family and you take some kind of summation of those values and prove they are equal. Uh, but of course you need many identities so you can separate the individual ones and the, what happens is you're going to have some test functions and you bring like two formulas, each of them involving certain test function and each of them will give you certain, one of them give you certain parts of this first one, the second give you parts about the periods, which depends on the test function and you can show they are equal. And after you vary your test function, you hope you can subtract the corresponding part. Uh, so, so you need, it involves two such formulas. Uh, the first one uh, is, is just a pretty traditional thing. Um, we have our group G and H. This is our unitary groups or some inner forms of unitary groups. And you take F to be the compass for the function on G. We have the kernel function as you your summation of the rational points. Um, so everything is over F0, though. F0 is the base field. Um, and you take the 
integration for the MJK, the kernel function and take two components integral over H. Uh, this bracket is a daddy quotient. So it's the quotient of the identity points by the rational points. Because you can see this function is invariant by the rational points. So you take this integration. And this integral emits two expansions very vaguely because you need to be careful about convergence. But very vaguely, there are two expansions. Um, one is concerning spectral information. I write that J pi of f, where pi is summation over some cascade representations that you singled out. And for each of the J pi, what happens is this so called spherical character where you take some orthonormal basis of pi, I write that phi, and take the peerage of them and take the product and take summation, where your f acts in one of these peerage. And this, this fact comes from the fact that the kernel function is the kernel function for the, for the pi f acting on the uh, L2 function in L2 of G, uh, L2 of G bracket. So you have this expansion. And they have another one that follows directly from orbit integral, the usual techniques of unfolding, is summation over the orbit gamma. Gamma is a double coset of G by the group H. And for each of the gamma, you take integral of your function on the orbit H gamma H, this double coset. Okay, it just come from unfolding the integrations. Uh, this is the usual one, which will, this is the usual one, which will tell you what happens for this peerage. And now we want something that explains the other side. This is more exotic. Um, it's, it's, it's not very obvious why we, this is the right approach, but um, the motivation seems to me at least is that after we make this and we reduce everything in the local situation, this is the right one that you need. So, so it's kind of exotic. Um, you have the Nash group, G prime, which is GL2N, still everything is over base field. And H prime is uh, this diagonal group. It's two blocks, GLN and times GLN. And we take a test function. Uh, we need, furthermore, another test function, phi. This is the combustible function in n dimensional vector space uh, over F0. And one has the metabolic isotope series defined by phi. Anyway, you have this formula. Um, what happened is we look at the following integration. Um, so in the beginning, it's the same as the ones we see in the last slide, the kernel of F and the integral of H1, H2. And then we need to add weight factors. There are two of them. The first one is the Eisenstein series, this one. Uh, but what happened is, you know, each of the H prime has two copy of GLN. And you, so the H1 is two copy of GLN and you take the first copy because this G is just for GLN. It's necessary evaluate for GLN. Take the first copy of the first H prime, evaluate as necessary. And then there's a character eta. As before, this eta is the quadratic character um, defined using the classical theory. And this is eta, eta of f, this is eta of f prime. Okay, you must forget what's the quadratic field here, but anyway, there are two of them and you take this eta. It seems the only right ones that should make this work. Okay. And we consider this formula. Oh, oh my God, I forget to write this. Uh, Wait. Hmm. 
I don't know how I can write something on board. Uh, so there should be something like H. Oh, that's fine. Uh, sorry, I have this S, S is in the icing series. Never mind. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, and once again, this has two expansions. One is corresponding to the um, spectral side, one corresponding to the orbit integral. Uh, on the spectral side, I mean, you can expect this happens because the kernel of F can be expanded using the spectral sense to end up with integrations over H prime by one of the Eisenstein series. That's where the Eisenstein comes from because uh, in, the, in, in the integral uh, presentation of the, uh, of the center L function by Bump and Friedberg, they have this Eisenstein series there. That's where this comes from. And you will end up with something for each of the pi's and end up with something related to the central value of L functions. Um, on the other hand, on the other hand, you can just expand as usual using the unfolding techniques. Uh, in this case, because the existence of the Eisenstein series, what you get is the following. So it's still orbit integral and it's for the H prime times H prime R K on G prime. But because of the Eisenstein series of the extra component uh, is the n-dimensional vector space over F, over F zero though. And so this is four copy of JN and only the first copy acts on the vector component. It's a bit of strange, but that's what you get after you, you know, unfolding everything. And of course, once we get these two things, uh, first of all, you value has zero though. This is the quantity you need for the periods. And if you want to consider derivative, you take a derivative of this i. And this guy I want to say is it's related to the previous j of f for some matching functions. Any question for this? All right, um, now I have explained these two formulas. One is J corresponding to group G, and other is I corresponding to group G one. And now the strategy, as I said, is of course to first of all identify the, this geometric side and showing you might choose matching functions so that your matrix side gives you the same thing. This would imply you have the same thing in the middle, and in particular have the same thing on the left. And now you vary your choice of test function and you hope you can subtract the information corresponding to individual pi. Now, can you say a methodological uh, point here? Um, you're gonna prove an identity. Yes. You set it up with an Eisenstein series, which uh, the identity is not valid for all S. It's only valid when you specialize, right? Uh, I'm gonna evaluate that S for zero. Okay, but what I'm saying is you're not proving an identity for all S in the end. The final identity is only valid when S is at the special point. Yes. So where does that come in the analysis? That How do you exploit that it's that special point? Um, I mean, this is standard, but I don't see it in this very... Um, you, know, you know, actually, the Eisenstein theory, this, this point is somehow the Eisenstein theory in some cases could have a pole. It's not always holomorphic at zero though. But we're still going to evaluate because if you, when you bring this into the trace formulas and after all the integration, this pole will disappear. It has a pole when this n is even, but when it's odd, it doesn't have a pole. Um, and you mean how- uh, so What I mean is, is, is so it's a yeah. residue computation. Uh, what can I say? Special values like class number formula and so on are, are usually a residue computation or the central value, something special about that point happens uh, like in the chronic limit formula or things like that. I'm just trying to understand in this general context, you're not proving an identity for every S in the end. Yes, um, so, so um, I'm not sure whether I understand it correctly, but um, so first of all, um, this, this E is, is something like a set of theory associated with this, uh, this vector space of dimension. So when you unfold, you get some Fn here. 
and and when you and after you decompose into the local component, so so you have this decomposition into i gamma, and each of them makes into product local component. Then you try to evaluate at the s equal to zero. Though. And it's somehow relevant. I mean, this this s is also relevant in how we define the local transfer, which I'm not going to explain it here. But you, I'm going to leave this s to define what what do I mean by integration on the zero side. All right, I'll continue and maybe it'll become clear as we go. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I think a kid's question is <laughs> ahead. Uh, for other side, for J side, yeah, for there's J side. no way uh, to put an S inside, right? You know, that's a uh, yeah. You can't put an S. In you cannot inside. put an S. In, uh, yeah, you in have a special case. You know, where S equals zero or take a derivative. Only two cases, right? But derivative you have to use a uh, in algebra geometry. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. So there's no clear. I mean, like a classical. Uh, like a zero way formula, you only when s equals zero, you have a zero way. Otherwise, you don't have. It. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's zero way uh, is usually a residue computation. It's like a class. Yeah, this is a similar, just special value computation. So I am just philosophically asking. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, all right, it only becomes an identity when s is zero. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Uh, all right, I think I already see this page. Mm. Yeah, still have 17 minutes. So now I can say what we can prove. Uh, so I give you the formulations of this, but now what you need to do is to at least to run this argument, you first of all need to identify those orbits and show you can do a transfer of functions, especially you want to show the satisfy from the lemma. It's always an interesting thing, like you have some global motivation, you end up with some comparisons and miraculously this force you to prove some identities in the local place. And the important thing that, that we can prove is we can actually prove this from the lemma. Um, so first of all, we can identify the orbits, at least if you take orbits which are regular semi-simple. And the fundamental lemma, there are, as I said, there are four cases because of bike ride extension, there are four cases. And two of the cases is known. It's either case where the extension, um, where extension is split, in which case we get GON instead of unitary group as our, our group G. And in this case, this is both the fundamental lemma and the transfer is being proved by Jahe Guo and first proved by Guo in 1996 uh, in his thesis, and then the transfer proved by Zhang Chong in 2015. So this case are more or less settled. Uh, I want to say, I mean, in the case of Jackie Guo, they also have a, they also have a formulation of their conjecture. Uh, I mean, in the, so that, that corresponds to the case where F or F, or F zero is split uh, using relative transformers. And in that case, our formulation, our comparison is, of course, just the same thing as their comparison. But the difference is they don't have isomer series. And we do have that because in, if you're assuming everything is free, then our, our isomer series will, will be you know, very simple and it doesn't make any difference. So anyway, um, and so for the case of fundamental lemma, there are remaining cases where this extension is is not split, it gives you a um, genuine unramified extension of degree two in this local place. And uh, what we can do is we can prove the fundamental lemma in that corresponding place. Mm, yes. Uh, mm, now this is probably a little bit technical, but uh, since we're still going to be like 10 more minutes, I'm going to say something that is maybe technical. So this is how we prove it. Um, it's how we prove it. So. Okay, can I ask for, um, 
Is is your unitary group allowed to actually be split? Is my unitary group? Yes, we do. So in, in that case, what what are we talking about? Like um, for GGP, I guess in that case, the RTF it, becomes like trivial. Yeah, so they're talking about F is split, uh, right? F is split, right? Yeah, but I'm saying so in that case, you're comparing like the linear period with linear period and an Eisenstein series. Oh, you are talking about, uh, let me say, uh, no, our group is, um, um, in that case, this is a conjecture of Jacques Guo. The period is GO2N and contains a subgroup GON. Is this period or some inner forms of this? And compare that with the uh, with this L function. Um, so it, it's still going to be the phase change. In that case, F is split, so E0 is the same thing as F prime and the L function of, of this is exactly their conjecture. Uh, I'm asking what does the RTF say when? Oh, when the RTF say. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a very good point, actually. Uh, so, oh, there is one difference, actually. Uh, let me put it here. Yeah, so this is the RTF. In that case, uh, this F is trivial, so the Eisenstein theory has a pole. And what you should do is instead of evaluate at S equals zero, they'll take the residue. Uh -huh. Okay. That's the original. Okay, you're right. I mean, this literally doesn't apply to the case where the space. You need to take residue. I see. Okay. Yeah. But that's the only case where you take residue. Other case, you just take the value. Yeah. Actually, that's why this this formula reduced to zeros when in the case where F split because the necessary the residue is independent of H1 H2. Okay. Uh, any other question? If I give this uh, technical proof. So, okay, so how we prove it? Um, even though steps are technical, but it actually involves quite interesting things, I think. Um, so first of all, you, there are lots of reduction. You have this fundamental lemma for units and these groups and you do reductions, you integral some groups out and then you reduce to the algebra by the k -like transform. And you then do some other integrations. But at the end of the day, you will end up with the following comparison. On the one side, you have GON acts some GON times F0 to the N, F0 to the field and N dimension. And with something else, and there are two cases, because we have two cases, uh, and I said we have four cases, but two of them are treated by Jackie Guo. And other two cases, you correspond to the action. On the one side, you have UN acts on HUN. HUN is the space of long run down to generate Hermitian matrix. And other one is GLN over the base change over the, over the correct extension acts on two copies of H1. And what you need to prove after the reduction is, is more than the fundamental lemma for these transfers, but actually the fundamental lemma for all the spherical functions. Uh, it's kind of, um, you know, you have to get into the reduction steps to explain why even if you, you just start with unit uh, in 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 our fundamental lemma, after the reduction, you have to prove more than that. Um, so you, so the spherical functions on H n, they have very light prime tradition. Haranaka proved there is a isomorphism between those spherical functions, with the ones on the J n. Both of them, both of them has a has a module structure over J n over the correct extension, and they are, both of them are ranked two to the n module and this isomorphism. And what you want you to prove is certain functions are marching in, in this transfer. Explicitly in the case, in the first case, you want to prove for any spherical function phi on this side, march with iota phi and times the identity of the maximum compact in the vector space and other thing on the inner side reduced to this kind of formula. And that's the first step. It already looks quite beautiful, I think. And, and then we prove this by a global method. 
we first of all showing for this two for this for this local situation we can prove the existence of transfers and the fundamental lemma for units so so it's this this very formula you phi is the unit that's something we can prove and this follows from my thesis uh, where we use a debit argument from the jacket wireless transfer okay i'm going to avoid seeing this and then after we have those transfers and the fundamental lemma for units we're going to run a global argument where we produce another just irrelevant but another relative phase formula which localize to the same situations locally but whose spectral side is easy to understand i'm not going to write down the details of those but i'm just going to say the spectral side of this another relative phase formula is going to be um, expressed in terms of unitary periods which is well understood by the work of Jack Ye and Fagan, Naked, and Often. And using their work, we can understand the spectral side. And after that, which means we can understand if we, if we insert the spectral functions, we have the identity on the spectral side. So we go back, we have the identity on the geometric side, which prove that transfers. And this very same method was used by Spencer Leslie to prove, actually prove some of the, some of the cases here and also some cases for other transfers. It's, it's more or less the same method. Okay, um, is there any question? All right, um, one last thing. So I'm talking about those um, periods all the time. So let me just go back to a few things about the arithmetic versions. Uh, once again, there are hopes of using this approach to establish the identities for the derivative. And the difference we need to adjust is first of all, on the I side, you want to take the derivative. That's why we have an S variable here, you can take a derivative. And on the jump on the on the unitary side, it of course needs to be changed. It will be related to the high pairing of the of the Shimura values, a cycle down Shimura values. And once again, both of them has expansion into geometric side and spectral side. And you want to prove you have transfers that can enable identity in the geometric side. Uh, this would require the thing that we did just now for the for the version without derivative, plus transfers in the arithmetic sense. Is the arithmetic transfer and the arithmetic fundamental lemma. And in this case, luckily at least we have the arithmetic fundamental lemma. This is, um, we don't show this actually follows from the conjecture in the case of local Kuda Rampot. And uh, able to prove that last year, so this one just follows directly from that. Okay, um, I guess that's probably everything. Yeah, and thanks for listening. All right, let's all unmute and clap. Uh, questions for Jingwei? Yeah, so, um, yeah, this something reminded me, uh, uh -huh. many years ago, when I talk about it, there's a kind of thing for Shimura three, four, there's another one, um, like Ziegler threefold, right? You have a O three two inside. The Shimura curve inside is the O one two. There's a O two zero. This is kind of a, you know, a generalized form of the reductive pairs, right? You have a U two n inside of U n U n cross U n inside. Yes. You, you suddenly can play similar game for orthogonal group. Uh, right, like O O five, like O three cross O two in O five. You have a small dimensional case. <laughs> yeah. So so, mm -hmm. anything, I I, I my also gonna go always in. Uh, it's a, a tricky right for for. Yeah, the good thing about here is we 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 really have a you know a formulation of the RTF that's quite workable. I see. Yeah. This is kind of tricky why you get this, but seems to work perfectly well. 
So when you say arithmetic, so in a arithmetic situation, mm -hmm. I don't know what's the final theorem. You prove you 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 prove. Uh, well, we haven't proved, but I mean, you prove some local. Uh, okay, yeah, we, this is your conjecture. We can prove the local AFL, so there should be some identities for the comparison. Yeah. But, uh, let me make a, a crazy statement. See if you can oh. disprove it on the spot. All the L functions you're seeing there, I mean, I assume you can disprove it, but I don't see it. Uh, once N is large, so you don't go look at elliptic curves or anything where we know answers. Uh, all your L primes at the center are, I claim, not zero. The even <laughs> equation, all L primes are not zero. Can you disprove me with an example? Uh, all your theorems, uh, if you just say the two numbers are not zero, I, I'm going to tell you I'm not impressed because I think everything is not zero. <laughs> so, you so, so, that. So, I challenge you to disprove that. So, yeah, yeah. False under some conjectures, if you found some cycle which is infinite order somewhere, but can you actually disprove it? Can you give me an example where L prime is actually provably zero and it's even functional equation? After all, this was uh, in Gross Zagier, they provided that to Goldfeld to solve the class number problem. It's quite a significant thing. One example. Okay, it's a challenge to you to think. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me the derivative. Yeah, that, that's. Yeah, I want an example to show your theory actually is meaningful. That there are examples where it vanishes. Yeah, you have to use a different way to show it's zero. You oh, cannot you use this formula. And then you, or maybe you would uh, uh, have some rationality there. And yeah, even even Kurosaki as a method, you don't, you prove zero, not because oh, you have to come with an elliptic curve with rank three. Yeah, you come. Yeah, you come with the curve. You cal you calculate the yeah, thing and the points. Yeah, you have something to start off with. Yeah, so I, I'm just challenging you that uh, it's an amazing formula, but uh, it could be that they all. No, is there a meta theorem or meta argument? It's very easy to see they're not zero very often. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, I, it's just a wild challenge. Yeah. It's, just, it's actually a nasty question. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not nasty. It just means that you have to create different kind of mathematics mm -hmm. for, 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 for valuations. Anyway, it's a remarkable identity. It's a remarkable generalization. So. Mm -hmm. So do you really, uh, okay, so maybe, maybe, mm, you wanna make something, uh, number added together, right? It's a two N minus one. That's only one partition, okay, probably. You mean produce other cycles? Yeah, I mean, you have many other ways, many. Yes. Uh, it's hard to make it middle dimension. <laughs> yes, right. But but you can, I mean, you, uh, for, for unitary, so right hand side, you don't need a one there. You can you can have a UMN. <laughs> it's a still more variety. Yes, yes. But dimension is MN square. What? You, if you have UMN on the right hand side, Mm. The yeah. dimension, the product of them. Yes. So left hand side, you probably can play similar game, you know. So you you get a U. Uh, you're trying to. I haven't ma checked. Maybe. Maybe it's not that good idea. I mean, that's a make maybe the coding may even bigger, right? Maybe this is the largest one you can get. Simple, yeah, simple is something which is. <laughs> <laughs> simple arithmetic. <laughs> I was a little bit confused by the last slide. Like, are you suggesting that the AFL or your situation is related to the AFL or the GGP situation? Uh, for the, yes. I mean, for the Kuda Rafford, the, the arithmetic set of correspondence. When you, when you, like this theorem of ways, is that relevant to you? That was for GGP, right? Uh, it's relevant to, yes, it's actually somehow, after we reduce all the local situations, 
at least it implies this one is probably going to be equivalent. This identity is, I mean, it's going to be some identities on the rough holding space with derivative of, of obvious integrals. And then implied by, by the Kula rough case. Sorry, are you, is this theorem, which AFL is this referring to? I think. Is this uh, for your case or for the uh, GDP case? Oh, uh, you mean, uh, you mean I this AFL, I mean the theory. Uh, uh, yeah, but the, the theorem is referring to the GGP AFL, the one that we proved. No, last. no, for the, oh, sorry, I maybe it's missing. For the AFL, that, uh, that we, our red trace formula, I didn't write it, what it means. Yeah. So for this comparison between this I prime and J, after you reduce the local situation, you get something you want to prove. And why is it related to Kula Rappaport? It's just because the low, I mean, local Shimravati are the same. I mean, it's, it's still the Rappaport is space of unitary groups. Right? Yeah. Yes, and you have to do something, but, but eventually you find these identities are relevant. Uh, so, uh, does the usual fundamental lemma in your setting, yes. not the negative one, also follow from some theta lifting stuff? No, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, why is the difference? Why is that different? Why is that different? Why is that different? Yeah, actually, I'm not sure. Yeah, but I don't think our method would be implied by a set of response. Yeah, it's a good question, but I don't know <laughs> for the moment. Uh, okay, so like uh, uh, that uh, uh, could put stuff in the usual setting. Yeah, so in the uh, special value setting, in some local uh -huh. density and equal to some integral, right? Yes. yes. You say a bit about the reduction, um, uh -huh. improving this theorem, how you, uh, you mentioned you need to match all spherical functions. Can you just say a bit about how that comes up? You mean why does it end up with this, all the spherical functions? Yeah. Um, so in the, so like in the reduction with GGP, what happened is more or less you have a group G, uh, I, I mean, you have like G1 times G2 acting on some of varieties X and the where G2 acts freely, so you integral over G2, you end up with G1 acts on the quotient, right? And in this case, somehow you still integral but the action of G2 is non-trivial, which would end up give you some function which is not the fundamental function of fundamental lemma, but just being spherical, but it's actually an infinite summation of spherical functions. And yeah. So yeah, so this, this is function on, for example, long generate Hermitian space. After you do reduction, you actually get a function on the order Hermitian matrix, but it's not going to be a well-defined function, not well-defined on HN, but it's not compass board. So you end up with many, many pieces of spherical functions. But on the unitary side, do you have to descend to the Lie algebra? Is that yes, how that's yes, okay. yes, we do. Thank you. So it's like get to the algebra and you back to the group again to end up with all the spherical functions. Sure. Yeah. And can you just once again say say uh, the, 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 the objects that are being compared on the on the geometric side? Uh, objects being considered in the geometric side. Uh, you mean those orbital integrals? Or? Yes. Uh-huh. Like, like this. 
I mean, I don't know what, what's your question. So I'm, 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 trying to, I'm trying to determine the way in which you're making the correspondence. Um, yeah, so, so there are two, two formulas, right? One is on the usual part, the, the geometric side is just this orbit integral. Okay, that, that, that's easy. Uh, okay, I guess the question is on the linear side. So um, the action is this, this four GLN, this four copy of GLN, X on G prime and GL two N plus a vector space of dimension N, and only one of them acts on this place. And you take the integral, it's still the integral on the orbit, uh, but it's not quite well defined. You have to define this by analytic continuation see. with actual S and then evaluate that S because the orbit is not, is not compact, it's not, yeah, it's not compact. So you define mm -hmm. using the, some theta integrals and you evaluate the S, and then you evaluate that S equals zero. So it's, it's not quite easy to, I mean, you could make it say in like some integrals without S, but it's, it's going to be some kind of um, not easy to define. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And do you actually get a matching orbit by orbit? Um, yeah, you actually have matching orbits. Um, at least you know, for regular semi-simple ones. Okay, maybe I forgot to say, so there's one issue here is the comparison in the, on the neutral side, uh, the orbits, what you get is only the stable orbits. You can't possibly, you know, match usually with GLN without you revolving the issue of stability. So it's going to be some stable orbit integrals. Um, on the usual side. It also means to, if you want to prove this uh, identity of the trace formulas, uh, then if you, you know, want to prove this for very general functions, then you would need to stabilize the equation. So I'm basically hiding this fact that this needs to be stabilized in general. Um, in the last slide, do you actually uh, compute the the height pairing um, explicitly, or uh, you mean the AFL? Uh, I mean the sh the the pairing between. Um, I mean on the top formula, the left hand side. Top formula, left hand side. Um, <laughs> you know, just many. Uh, I said in principle, <laughs> that many things that. You need to verify, yeah. But for the moment, what we can see is AFL holds. Any more questions or comments? Okay, if not, let's thank Jingwei again. <laughs>